All right, sorry for the technical difficulties. Still ironing everything out. But we're gonna get there, guys. We're gonna get there. Just like we're gonna get here with melting this butter as well. Uh, it's gonna be important to have the same amount of butter as you do have flour. So I have half a cup of flour as well as half a cup of butter. As soon as all of your butter is in a nice liquid state, you're just going to pour your flour right on in there. And just incorporate into a smooth. Uh, the one thing about a roux, you want to be really careful not to burn it, because if you burn a roux, you have to start over. There's no real saving it. And this roux is going to go through several different stages. Uh, you're going to notice the different stages by the different colors of the roux. Right now, it's more of a blonde roux. And the darker you take your roux, the better color your etouffee, your gumbo, your gravy is going to be at the very end. So you're just going to let it go, let it cook and do its thing. And you're just going to keep, keep sure to continue to move it constantly and watch your heat. Right now I'm about medium heat. And it's gonna bubble and you're gonna be really zen-like making this. Of course it's a good fall meal, nice and hearty, good warming, comforting food. Uh, etouffee is a regional dish from Louisiana, uh, Cajun Creole country. Comes from the word smothered in French because of the colonization of the French in the Louisiana area. I'm just going to keep working and keep letting it go. I hope it wasn't arm day because you're definitely going to get a workout today. While we let this cook, I'm going to show you a little of my accoutrement. Uh, accoutrement is just uh, the accompaniment of the things you're going to be cooking today. You have your diced green peppers, onions, and celery. That's your holy trinity. You have some parsley and some green onions for garnishment. And I have about a pound of a shrimp. Uh, they're marinating. A little olive oil, salt, and pepper. And that's going to be our protein for the etouffee. We also have some prepared white rice. Uh, feel free to use any rice that you want, cauliflower rice. Also, you're going to need about four cups of prepared stock. Um, I made some shrimp stock from the shrimp I had prepared, but chicken stock is just as fine homemade or store-bought. I'm a little bougie, so I made mine. I know this seems like a little bit of a long process, but it's definitely worth the end result. So just bear with me and we're gonna get through this together. Also, if you enjoy videos like this, uh, comment some things you would like to see in the future. Uh, comment some things I can do better. Always trying to get better, always trying to grow. Like this roux, it takes time and a little bit of effort. Alright, because I'm a little more experienced, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit more. I would recommend taking your time and letting this go on medium heat. 
um, even low heat just to let it cook slowly so you don't burn it. And the darker you take your roux, the less it's going to thicken. So for etouffee uh, versus more of your gumbos, you want to maybe have a, a brown caramel little shade to it. You want it to be about the color of your coffee. As you can see with the temperature increase, you're gonna have a couple of different browning spots just from your hot spots on your pan. You wanna make sure you rotate them around so everything browns at an even pace. You don't wanna have over here where it's a little warmer to be a little darker than over here. But as you can see, things are starting to change and we are getting somewhere. And some common Missteps that can happen, uh, you can get clumping. So if you use, if you have an unbalanced amount of flour to your butter, you can get a little bit of clumping in there. And to remedy that, you just wanna give it a nice little sturdy whisk. And that'll dissipate your flour. Uh, making roux is a bit of a rite of passage. So I've burnt many a roux in my day, both in the home like I am now and professionally. So do not be discouraged, um, upset if it does not go well the first time you do it. So as you can see right now, it's getting, we're getting there uh, in comparison to my hand. And the good thing about learning, making your own roux and your bases, it's gonna open a lot of doors to other different culinary kind of tricks and tips. So if you wanna make gumbo, you wanna make a really nice gravy for your holiday season coming up, uh, this is gonna be a good way, a good stepping stool to put on your tool belt. All right, we're about halfway to where we need to be. Uh, I wanna take this a little darker. And when you add your vegetables, it's going to thicken up immediately because of the moisture in the vegetables. Do not be alarmed. Uh, you'll let them cook a little bit and you'll let them simmer again. All coming along very nicely make sure you get all the sides you want a nice even color no patches no spot no lighter spots Get a nice little close up of your roux, and you're going to get into when it gets darker, you're going to get into like a little bit of a danger zone. And what I mean by a danger zone is you're going to be right on the crest, crevice of greatness, or a very sad and very burnt experience. So, at this point, um, I would recommend putting all your focus on your roux. Make sure it has your full attention. Because if I was to go do just about anything, I'll come back to my smoke detector going off. Then I'll be very sad. And, and it's Sunday. We don't want to be sad on a Sunday. Alright, I want to say another maybe two to three minutes. And then it's going to get really exciting. We're going to add our vegetables. Right now you're starting, just make sure you, if you vigorously stir your room, you're gonna keep it from burning. All 
right, we're going to have a little bit of fun, guys. Also, cautionary tale, this is very hot at this point. Be, please be sure not to burn yourself when you're dumping cold items into hot items. Because these vegetables are, bit, are pretty much full of water. And that's going to not play nicely with the butter over here. Alright, let's go, guys. It smells amazing in here right now. And like I said before, it's going to thicken up almost immediately because of the water content in your vegetables. Uh, do not be concerned. As you can see, the roux is clinging to the vegetables for dear life right now. You can let those simmer for a little bit. cook just for a little bit because you still have your stock to add to it to give your roux a little more body. Before you add your roux, I like to add a little bit of garlic. This is two cloves of garlic. You don't want to add your garlic right away because garlic has a high tendency to burn. You don't want to add it too late because that's all you're going to taste. So you want to get it nice and in the middle. So you're going to let that and you cook it till it's just fragrant. And when I say cook it till it's fragrant, uh, you want to smell all of your ingredients. So you smell your bell pepper, your celery, and now your garlic in there. And of course, you have your roux as well. So you're just going to let that. Let that go for a little bit. Just so everything is a little tender, a little translucent. Alright, so you've made your roux, you've sauteed your vegetables for a little bit. Everybody's nice and chunky in there. Get some of these bits out of there. You take your stock. I have four cups of it right here of homemade shrimp stock. And you're going to very carefully toss that in there very, ever so slowly. And this is going to start to give your etouffee is going to start to take shape. So take, just take your time. Or if you're like me, you're going to spill a little bit. I'm using bounty paper towels in case they want to sponsor me. Going. Every time you add a little bit, you just want to incorporate it all together. And as you cook your roux and your vegetables all together, they're definitely going to begin to thicken up. And it might become a little loose as you add the liquid. Do not worry. As it cooks down, it's going to come back together. And you're gonna take your Cajun seasoning. Uh, Tony Satchery's is fine. I use my own blend of paprika, salt, pepper, Cajun seasoning. It's the best in my opinion. Um, you don't need a lot. Um, when you you have the chicken stock that has a lot of sodium in it, you have the vegetables that's gonna give it a lot of flavor.
turn the heat up just a little bit to bring it to a boil. Add a little more slack. Uh, normally etouffee is served with rice. I'm doing just plain white rice today, nothing special. I did cauliflower rice if you saw the earlier post. And right now you, you got to a good point. I used about almost three and a half cups of shrimp stock. This is going to cook down and thicken a little bit more. So if you need to loosen it up a little bit, uh, just go ahead and add some more stock. All right, there's two ways you can add your shrimp. Uh, normally people add their shrimp towards the end. If you're eating your etouffee the same day and you know you're gonna eat all of it, you can dump your shrimp straight into the pan. The reason being that the residual heat from the etouffee is gonna cook the shrimp and you, want them very, you don't want them to get overcooked. If you don't think you're gonna eat it or you wanna make it for lunch for the week, I suggest saute them separately. And when you saute them separately, they'll stay firm and tender throughout the whole week and they won't get that little grainy look from cooking them in the sauce. Yeah, as you can see, it's a nice thick consistency right now. All right, we're gonna let this reduce. Reduce is a cooking term, which means to literally remove moisture and remove water. All right, that's great. Or just about anything making your soups, your sauces. If you're enjoying this, uh, let me know how you're feeling. Be nice to me in the comments. This is my first time. As you can see, as the smoke and the steam dissipate, it's going to get thick. It's going to thicken a lot. I have some friends coming over to um, indulge, so I'm going to put all the shrimp in there. Let it reduce for about another minute or so. Thanks, guys. I think I'm doing great too. Another cooking turn is called the nappe effect. So nappe is when you're dragging your sauce like along the bottom of your pan and it moves along with the spoon. So that's a great little tip if you're making tomato sauce, uh, etouffee, something that needs to thicken up. Add a little more, a touch of stock. All right, we just wanna toss these bad boys in there. And again, just like before, because of the water within the shrimp, it's gonna add just a little bit of looseness to our sauce, but it'll leave it on the heat, it'll tighten back up. At this point, you want to kill the heat. Uh, the reason being just because um, one of the worst things in the world, in my opinion, is overcooked shrimp. And this stuff is hot enough right now to where it'll cook the shrimp. Uh, you just want to cook them until they're pink. And 
basically you want to think of shrimp as your fist. The more it closes up, overcooked, perfect, raw. All right, let's plate some up. And a nice little ladle. I'm serving this with white rice. And you're going to want to garnish with your green onions and your parsley. Fresh parsley, please. Give your bowl a nice little white. And that is shrimp etouffee. A little fresh cracked black pepper. Because this is for me, I can add a little extra black pepper. A little extra heat, a little extra spiciness. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, guys. Thing to do from here is take your picture for the Instagrams <laughs> and your Facebook friends make everybody jealous. Till next time, guys. Yeah, etouffee is um one of the easier dishes. It's not much of a, as a in the words of time or preparation as maybe like a gumbo. Uh, your gumbo roux is gonna take a little longer. A little longer to make, maybe about an hour. My roux is done in maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, it's got a nice little color to it. A little light, little, little, little lighter than me, but. Till next time, guys.